G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now, this channel is about scale modeling, right? Not for kids, it's not toys. They're not bloody toys, they're for adults, all right? Because I don't want to copper any trouble from those, those, those feral transvestite animals. Think about it. <laughs> Anyhow, this is one of my seasonal updates, so stay watching and you'll get to see everything that's on my workbench and something about the new kits. Alright, thanks for coming back. <laughs> it's always hard to get through those credits, isn't it? Yes, alright. And apparently music is very attractive to children. God sake. Cartoons, music, anything interesting, anything funny. I think that's all I do. Well, except for the interesting, maybe. Anyhow, look, enough of that. You're here, and you've all been asking for another workbench and no kids. <laughs> yeah, we changed it. We had to change it legally, apparently. Yeah. Otherwise, we got sued, bloody, you know, 40,000 friggin' shekels. Yeah. <laughs> Tell you, sucks. Anyhow, uh, I'm not even going to get into that whole bloody debate, right? YouTube cocked up and bloody, you know, basically fiddled the children underneath the counter. And, um, yes, they paid $170 million for that. And now we all have to be squeaky clean. Funny, isn't it? Sort of reminds me of the Catholic Church. <laughs> oops, oops. Sorry about that. There's probably a whole lot of bloody Catholics watching. Well, what are you doing? Should you all be in church? Piss off. Uh, all right. Now that's got rid of that demographic of my audience. Uh, okay, workbench and new kits. Well, first of all, workbench, well, the bounty, yes. Um, my time has been limited. That's why this sort of video has been very sporadic. And certainly, I didn't do a spring workbench new kits because basically uh, I moved house. Well, I was going to explain that one in the previous year. I moved house. I got a much bigger hobby room. And um, it's much better here. It's sort of quieter, sort of. Didn't realise I was actually in the flight path of... Um, the airport and um, the planes drop right out of the sky. So I can only do like two minute segments when I'm recording and then some friggin' jumbo jet lands on my bloody roof and rolls over the tiles. Yeah, Brisbane. Anyway, apparently they're building another runway and I thought, oh, that's good. And I checked it all out and apparently there'd be less noise. And then a friend said, no, that means there'll be twice as many aeroplanes. Anyhow, enough of that. Uh, scale modelling, scale modelling, that's what it is. Now, the bounty, yeah, the bounties will be going ahead in leaps and bounds. I'll be doing a little bit of every now and then when I get snatched time between fighting aeroplanes and moving house and, and basically trying to work and having the gout and all the rest of it. There's just been a lot going on. Brisbane has, has taken up a lot of my time. I mean, there's tons and tons and thousands of curry places and there's only 21 meals in a week. It's, it's, it's really been hard. It really has. <laughs> all right, bounty. I'll have a video up. Soon, I don't know, It'll probably be next year, the way things go, and I'll talk about the running ring. I've been doing a lot of the running ring, all the sales are, are going in now. The whole whole last end of this bloody thing is just covered in string, all right? So, yes, there will be a video on that. Now, the Kraken, did you watch that video? Did you watch the Kraken? Okay, that's the one before this. Go back and watch that Kraken. So, what you think it is? Uh, actually, it comes up as Japanese Destroyer, right? Um, yeah, it looks rather innocent, that video. Watch it, <laughs> there's a bloody big Kraken in it, okay. Now, the Kraken went in for the competition that it was basically intended for. Uh, we'll just put up with this aeroplane landing on a roof because I'm not stopping tape. All right, this is what I've put up with all the time. Bloody Brisbane. Didn't happen when I was in the country. All the world were farting cows. Now, um, Kraken. Yeah. So the Kraken went into competition, right? And I won a bloody silver medal. <laughs> so how about that, eh? For a model that basically... I just threw it together. I didn't have time. It was a competition. I just quickly bloody glued the thing together like in about an hour and, and then made a crack in another hour and then, and then you know, whacked a few bits of string and a bit of PE on it, which, you know, didn't take me that long because it didn't do too good a job because basically the cracker was exploding and sinking. So, you know, chucked it together, whacked some paint on it, didn't paint it properly because I went, oh, bugger, can't be bothered detail painting this. I so just painted it black and then did kind of a tricky modulation effect by just spraying it from one side. I was too lazy to turn the water around it. And that wins you a silver medal in a, in a year-long competition. You know, people have spent all year tinkering and doing their models. Whereas I did. In previous years, I whipped my little tits off and I, you know, spent ages coming up with a bloody flower power bug and a, and, and, and a, and a little um, uh, a messy Fokker, which was a tiny little 172nd scale Fokker that I painted up like a measure smith. And I did all these sort of trick things. Nah, never won anything. No one gave a shit. Threw a Kraken together in... Probably about four hours. <laughs> Win a silver medal. Even put it into the monthly competition, like there's the 
annual competition. And then you can also enter your same one in the monthly competition. You're too lazy and you don't want to make another model, which I was. So nothing's happened on my workbench, but I'm pumping the bounty. So, um, another aeroplane. There you go. It's number two. Well, we'll count them through the video, right? Just keep a tally. So far, aeroplanes landing on Harry's roof, two. And we've only been going for bloody five minutes. Uh, so, yeah, I put it in for that in my third place in the monthly competition. Goodness me. So this is going to be my new modelling style. Um, uh, no care, no attention, no research. Just slap the thing together, wax and paint on it, don't care, and add krakens. Yeah, because apparently it wins medals. <laughs> no, who gives a shit? I'm not really in it for um, winning the awards, you know. They're nice. They're nice when they happen, but who cares? Now, look. Um, okay, Bounty and Kraken. They're on my bench. The Buccaneer, right? It's all it's all B stuff. Bounty, Buccaneer. Um, there's more Bs to come. Um the Buccaneer, yeah. Um, well, I sort of started building that, and then I got crook, and uh, it, it's 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 assembled. It's great, fantastic. Kit. Go back and watch that video. Okay, I've done a little more work on it. I've actually got it standing on its feet now. The undercarriage all done, which actually dry fit underneath. They've got the undercarriage, they're all built up, painted. And they dry fit underneath, so I can take them off again to do the full body paint. So we'll be doing that. I'll be painting that up as an Australian version. Well, there is no really Australian version of the old Buccaneer, but. I did see one back in the middle to late 60s when HMS Victorious birthed in Fremantle in Western Australia. And I was living in Perth at the time. And my dad took me down because he always took me down because he's a Navy guy. And we'd go down and we'd get on the warships and we'd walk around. So I was, was this thing probably a thing with boats. From an early age, dad was always taking me boats and you know, walking around on boats and seeing boats. It was all about buddy boats, right? Hello, sailor. <laughs> okay, so um, I would have seen Buccaneer. 230, I think that's what I'm making. I would have walked past it, uh, more than likely. Uh, if not, you know, one of the silver ones would have been on the deck of Victorious when I visited it. So it's part of my youth. So that's as close as I can get to an Australian version. All right. Now, what else on my bench? Well, um, there's the Mackie. Little photograph there. Yeah, it's the other airplane. So um, little Mackie's just something I picked up and I pot around with it every now and then. It's a lovely little kit. It's a fly kit. I'll do a video on that once I've actually got it assembled uh, before I start the paint job because the paint job's going to be fun. There's a whole lot of wood textures to do and it's it's um, wild Italian painting, you know, rather like it. So um, that's a little Mackie. Little, uh, I think it's an M5. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it is. It's great. It's really good. It reminds me of like the Porco Rosso stuff, you know, from, from that movie. I think they even had that little Mackie M5s in the Porco Rosso movie. Watch that if you haven't seen it. Porco Rosso. Yes, it's all about a pig. <laughs> what else? More bees? BMW. Yes, the BMW. Look, I'm nearly there. I do a little bit every now and then. It's so close to being finished. I just pull my finger out of my date get the thing done, okay? And then I'll do a video. I've been promising the bloody video for about the last 10 years. Well, a couple of years, but well, six months. All right. Um, and there's been a lot of farting. Uh, fiating. Yes. <laughs> Italian Fiat. Yes, for, for Jason, I actually did some work on his Fiat. I got all the undercarriage done. Well, undercarriage, you know, the underside of it, the suspension, all that. That's all done. I'm at the point now where I need to do the interior, so I'll probably try and have a crack at that over uh, Christmas period when I we'll finally get a break from work. And, um, yeah, get the interior done, slap the body on, which is already painted. Oh, here we go. Aeroplane count three. At night time, I can actually see them out of my window. I can actually look up and see the pretty lights of the aeroplanes coming through, you know. It was good when we had the bushfires. Well, actually, it wasn't. It was bloody horrible for most people. But the only advantage I had out of the bushfires is that the smoke haze and everything meant the flight plan was changed for the, for the aeroplanes and they were coming down a different direction. So during that whole period, yes, I did choke from all the smoke fumes, as did most of the bloody animals and all the people who lost their houses and everything. It was a bloody terrible thing. Bloody terrible thing. But um, I didn't have any aeroplanes going over my roof. But I don't recommend setting fire to Australia just so I don't have aeroplanes bothering me. It's, it's my, my pain is infinitesimal compared to what those people went through. Anyway, enough of that, okay? Not usually serious on videos, but this was a big thing. Go and bloody look it up, okay? Huge, massive, whole bloody side of Australia was on fire. Yeah, could be seen from space. Okay, um, enough of that. What we want to get on to now are new kits. Now, all right, the beginning of this year... I'm moving to Brisbane because I'm going to save money, right? And then I can buy my own house and I can get out of this bloody bullshit renting game because renting in Australia is absolute scum-sucking, pus-filled, horrible, okay? Because you're just treated like shit, right? Tenants crap, landlords are all fucking bloody uh, feudal overlords and that's how it is, right? It's a pain in the ass, pain in the ass. I've got to get back to having my own house like I used to, okay? But um, I've got to stop bloody having wives. You know? That's the problem. Three wives later, I've got no bloody house, yeah. There's a lesson for you, kiddies. Build your models, keep your first wife, 
and you'll be right. That's all right. Just keep her in a room somewhere. Okay. That's all right. Just keep her there, locked up. She'll be fine. The smell, you, you can basically deodorize with that, but don't remarry, don't divorce. It's too painful, ruins your hobby, ruins your life, and then you don't have a house. <laughs> yeah, it is Scar Modeling Channel. <laughs> All right, um, there's a whole pile of boxes over here. So how about I drag them out, and then we'll go through them one by one, because from far as I can tell, it was June when I did my last wank. Um, you know, it's a long time for me. I'm getting old. I don't, there's not much testosterone anymore, so there's not a lot of them going on. But anyhow, uh, six months since I did it, so there's a few kits that I managed to build. Look... In my defence, as I was saying, there's supposed to be no new kits on in Brisbane, but I have sold and given away 50 kits since I moved here. 50, all right? And I've basically probably bought 15, okay? And the ones I'm going to show you, they include, well, there's also like the, the review I did on the Batavia and the Stingray, you know, a few of these things that I bought. Uh, but basically, yeah, um, the stash has actually gone down, which was my intent. And money-wise, I've actually in credit, I've actually got credit to spend on my kids. So savings are happening. We are working towards that new house. You know? That will make me and little Basta Cat, if I can get her to stop pissing in the corridor. Oh, look. No, I don't want to get into that. She's um, not very happy in the heat in Brisbane and her uh, protest is to whiz in the corridor. Oh, well. We all have our own ways in self-expression and these days we can't really complain or judge anyone on how they express themselves. Yeah, I make bloody silly YouTube videos. Yeah, pissing in the corridor is nothing. <laughs> All right, new kits. Welcome back. Yes, did you uh, go and have a whiz or something? Cigarette, whatever? I ain't allowed to say that anymore. I think you're allowed to say whiz. I think you're allowed to talk about cigarettes. No, but anyhow, enough of that. Well, uh, this is my pile of new kits um, that I've acquired since I basically last did my wank, okay? And um, in no particular order, just however I found them, because obviously it's the order's probably actually smallest to biggest, so it'd sit on my bench and didn't fall over. So, look, um, have you ever heard of this brand? Armour, Armour, right? Armour. I'd, uh, I'd never heard of them. I'd never heard of them at all. Um, but they're, um, they're, they're, they're from, oh, look, I'll probably get this wrong, they're probably from Poland or something. Oh, check us out. Oh, look, I really should research these things. I'll put it on the bottom of the screen. <laughs> oh, look, it's been really busy, okay? And I've been running back and forth the hospital. Bloody relatives are dying. <sighs> Nothing about my life. Okay. Uh, this is a lovely little kit and I should do a review on it because I was building a 148 scale of these these PZLs, right? And um, I like subject, but that kit was bloody dreadful, really absolutely poorly bloody moulded and dreadful fit. And I was spending most of the time, you know, just about making it from scratch because it was such a piece of crap. Uh, this is gorgeous. This is really nice. Okay. Oh, what's that, number four? Number four, who's keeping a tally count, right? And we've got a betting system going on here, okay? Oh, look, I'll give you five bucks for seven. I reckon it'll be seven by the end of the video. <laughs> no, you give me five. I don't know. Whatever, okay? Let me know what the bloody, uh, what, the, what the pool is by the end of this, and we'll see who's won. <laughs> okay, this is a really nice kit. And so I picked that up for, like, just a couple of shekels. I was just in the store. I went, oh, it's a fizzle. And um, I actually didn't realise it was one seventy second because I... I pulled it out. I was at Paul's shop, actually. I pulled it out, had a look at it, and went, oh, wow, this is really good. This is, detail's fantastic. It's really popping out, you know. I might be able to show some photos here. Sort of. It's, it's a lovely kit. So I'm going to look for more of those armor hobby kits and um, and see what else they've got because I'm really impressed with that one. Beautiful moulding, okay. Um, other little things. Little things amuse me. Uh, look at this. Aston Martin. Now, these sell for uh, up to about 15 shekels, okay. It's like 150 Australian dollars, which is about, you know, just over 100 bucks US. They're rare. They're rare as bloody, um, you know, rare as rocking horse poo. And um, my mate, Becca, one of my neighbours, you know, I try, this is the thing, try not to buy new kits. So I got bloody neighbours like, like Bernard and Becca and the Duck and all these people always going, Harry, this is going cheap. And this is going, so Becca says, hey, you like those sort of, um, you know, turn of the century cars? Because I, I made a whole lot of the, the die cast ones, actually, you know. I ton of the bloody things, love them. And um, this was a shekel, right? A whole shekel, a whole $10 Australian. Nothing, absolutely nothing, $7 US, all right? Absolutely nothing on eBay. So no one was bidding on it. I left it at the last minute and I just bid 10 bucks or whatever, or I bought it or whatever. Whatever, I got it for a shekel, it was nothing. It was probably a shekel to post it. But it's a lovely old kit. If you've never built Matchbox, they, they're a dream. They're, they're not like your new kits, okay? They're, they're not precision, well, they are precision made, but they're not, you know, highly detailed and all the rest of it. And, but it's flash free, 
it goes together well. They're a lot of fun. And for me, it's a bit of, hang on, number five. Number five. How are we going on the polls? We're already up to number five. <laughs> Bloody aeroplanes. Uh, yeah, so Matchbox, um, Aston, I already started that. Um, having a lot of fun with that. I'll probably do a little video on it. So it's just a nice, simple, easy little build. It's just something I, I took on to club, have a tinker with. Um, now, uh, Fred. <laughs> Fred here, uh, there's a big long name, and I'll put that on the bottom of the screen because I'm not even going to try and pronounce it, okay? So Fred here, um, he came up on bloody uh, Facebook, right? On, I, I just got rid of um, some, some kits that I didn't really need. One of them was an old fight plane, but it was a kit, a difficult kit to build, and I decided I really didn't need the drama in my life. Um, it would come up well with a bit of tension, but I kind of lost interest. Yeah, it was a World War II one. Um, I had enough World War II float planes in my stash. So um, this came up, and, and I really like um, you know, World War One or even before. I like that era. I like all the very first airplanes, especially if they're seaplanes. And um, like my um, my W-12, my Wingnut Wings kit, I'll get around to finishing that. Honestly, that's got to be done next year, but we'll talk about it. Now, this came up right on a Facebook feed. Metro's having a sale. Here it is, and this. I thought, that's good. I'll have a big fortune, you know. Looked at the reviews, made sure it was okay, checked its pricing. Well, that's really good. And I picked that up for like about five shekels thinking, this is great. I've got the bargain of the century. There's lovely new kit and, you know, and it arrived and it was really good. Took it into Model Club to show the um, to show Shane, who's the, who's the, who's the World War One aeroplane expert there and everything. He goes, oh yeah, I've got one. Oh, what, what, did you get one on the sale? No, nah, I bought one about 10 years ago or something. Got it for like 10 bucks. Yeah, it's... um. One of those reboxy things, and uh, again, another little small company there in the Eastern Block who uh, sort of tricked me, and uh, I thought I'd done my research. Anyhow, I still like the kit. I kind of overpaid for it. Oops. Um, but it's a subject that I like. I'll probably try and build that. I might even build that next year, because it could, it should be quite fun. It's multimedia. There's, there's PE, there's resin, there's all kinds of stuff in there. It's, it's just lovely. I think there's resin. Yeah. There's, there's stuff in the box. Okay. Now, um... If you watched the video that I did on the armoured car, right, the main Rolls Royce armoured car, well, well, I love that so much. I love that subject. It's another kit that I'm really sort of fanging to finish, but I've really got to get my work in progress out of the way. Because um, although there's three on my workbench, <laughs> the 17 that I've started. We'll we do another video on that. We'll do another video on what's on Harry's work in progress shelf of doing. Anyhow, after I'd um, done the video on the Rolls Royce, I... Um, Found this one as well. My friend Bernard had one. Lanchester, okay? So a similar sort of thing, little armoured car from World War One, and this is Copper State Models. Now, uh, I've gone on about wingnut wings in, in, in other videos, and I you know I did the big wing one wings kit, which which gets a lot of views. And the quality of wingnut wings are fit, and just the fact that the manuals are just so beautifully produced. Well, look, th this Copper State Models, this kit at least that I've seen from them, um, it's like a wingnut wings kit, but for armour. Um, incredible manual, beautifully produced, lovely clear. The, the kit is is beautifully moulded and by all accounts goes together well. Uh, I'd really like to put that on top of my list to a building, you know. I might get rid of some of my, my dragon armoured kits and build that instead. And then, lo and behold, I just sort of got that and all the rest of it. And this one came out. This is also Copper State Models. And look at this thing. It's, 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 it's weird and wacky and wonderful. Yeah, it's a Herman armoured car. It's, um, it's rather bizarre. I mean, only one was built. Hang on, what's that? Number six, number six, number six. Have you got number six? Lucky number six. Come on in. First person to your bingo. So um, that um, Hamilcar, uh, Hamilcar Bachus, uh, Michael over in Germany, ha Hamilcar, yeah, I'll put a link. He did a video, uh, review on this one, okay? He did a lot of review on it. So he's a German guy doing a review on a German vehicle. You know, you assume he knows his stuff, but he does, he does. Then, um, I don't know, somewhere, where was I? Somewhere, I don't know, I think it I picked this kit up somewhere for like about a shekel. It just wasn't much at all. It was it was really cheap, you know. It was it was just going going for a bloody song. And I went, oh, I like a Mackie. That's really good. Um, so so I grabbed it. One forty eight score has to go a uh, Mackie. In its day, this was the best Mackie kit you can get. I don't think there's much better now. There there probably are newer kits out there and certainly newer tool kits. But um, this kit still holds its own and it's still a you know absolutely excellent kit, a nice build. And I've always wanted to do one, so I picked this up for, for virtually nothing. It probably a club, um, a little quick club kit. I don't know what it is. Anyway, I got, I got so excited about that that um, online up came this one, and it had full resin interior and this and that and the other and the bloody garden gate. 
And um, it was a little bit more, a little bit more admittedly, but I went, oh, in for penny, in for pound. And the two are slightly different, they're slightly different uh, Mackies. So I've acquired those. I, I probably won't be building them in a hurry. Um, I'd love to build them, but I said I've got 17 work in progress going to get away. But I've got a couple of Mackies now. Um, well, as opposed to the other M5, these these are, you know, this is the, the 202 and um, what's that one? It's a 202 as well. Um, it's a 205. So, yeah. So there you go. Um, you probably know more about this than me, so I don't write in because <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. I just know it's a Mackie. They're an absolutely gorgeous on your airplane and I know they were like the Italian Spitfire. They were incredibly, you know, well handling airplanes and gorgeous to look at and all the rest of it. If they had more, maybe they would have won the war. <laughs> Now, um, so the sort of little things been happening while I was cleaning out the stash and getting rid of stuff that I'm no longer going to build. You know, my my um, needs and the things I'm interested in ha have changed. And I was especially had bought all those sailing ships early in the year. And so basically I thought, well, I better rationalise down and can only build so many ships a year and I can't have all these other kits. And also this just was limited space where I was living first. And even here, there's, there's, well, there's space. I can make more space, you know, buy more cupboards. Anyway, no often. Um, if you remember back to the first year, I had my channel. And um, I had started out building ships. And um, I had the, the Graf Spey was the first thing that I built and the War Spite. And I didn't really have those. My first video was on Tank, which was the, the BT-7 was a Vesta. And then there was a group build and they wanted you to build um, aircraft and there was some theme for aircraft. And I picked the Skyhawk because I wanted to do an Australian one. And it was basically one of the first, well, I think one of the first jets I'd ever built. I don't remember. I might have built a Harrier when I was a kid. Who knows? Might have built a Lightning. So, you know, I basically built a lot of airfix stuff. But anyhow, I had never built much in the way of jets and I picked up the airfix um, Skyhawk. Thoroughly enjoyed the kit. There's a whole build series on that on my channel. There's a whole playlist you can find about the, the fun that I had with that and I finished finished it up. It wasn't bad. I mean, it wasn't bad ever. It's, it's not one of my best models, but I had a lot of fun and I learned a lot um, building it. And since then, I've got quite a quite an appetite for jets and I've acquired a few um, Lightnings and a few Harriers and those sort of things over the years. Uh, but this uh, this came up. Uh, I think this was one of Bernard's actually. Yeah, Bernard only won a couple of shekels for this and I went, oh, okay. It's a Skyhawk. Yeah, it's great. It's 148. Well, that's a bit bigger and better than uh, my Airfix uh, 172nd. And I ended up finding some photo which for it and a mask and everything. I went, that's, that's terrific. What a, what a lovely kit. And being a trainer, it's sort of a bit funky. It's got, um, you know, it's got the, the, the two the two seats with two sets of controls. There's a lot of detailing I can do there in the cockpit. So that's lovely. So that was good. And then I sort of did more research on the kits you could get and, and sort of got into this whole Skyhawk thing. You know, and, oh, again, Paul, Paul, another one of my neighbours, because, you know, Paul says, oh, Harry, you really want that kit, do you? Well, look, I need the floor mopped. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes I mop Paul's floor in his shop and he gives me kits, you know. It's a menial task, but then again, I'm a menial kind of person. <laughs> menial model, as some would say. So anyhow, I um, did some research. I found a hobby boss, all right? Um, like Trumpeter, it's basically part of the same company, and a really big Trumpeter fan. They do a really nice Skyhawk, and would you believe this is exactly the same scale as this one, right? So the same aeroplanes in both boxes, but they give you, Trumpeter says, no, no, well, Hollywood says, how about we give you a great big impressive box? <laughs> so I, I grabbed this one, and um, this is an F, oh, that's, uh, well, this is a, I think it's an F. Oh, I'd have to look, yes, it's an F, it's a 4F. And, um, Really looking forward to building this one. I might try and do this one next year because I really would like to build another Skyhawk. And I've got some ideas for this. Some um, some because I won't do the American version. I always do something unusual and different. And I've got a plan. I have a plan for something that will basically knock your socks off. Now, there was also the um, Stingray, but I did a video on that, so I don't need to show you the box. And there was, of course, the Batavia. I did a video on that as well. So um, that's kind of... Oh, Number seven, number seven. Yes, that's the seventh aeroplane. There you go. Okay, everybody who bet against me, tally up now. Come on, I want your money. <laughs> All right, well, make this video finish quick. Otherwise, we'll go to eight. Then I'll, I'll basically lose a bet. Now, oh, 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 quick story on this one. Right, now, this is a big kit. Okay, this is, this is oh, I'm going to make some room here. Uh, make, make some room so we can get this thing. It, it's, it's, it's very big, okay? It's very, very big. Now, I'm going to have to put it down. I'm getting in here. I'm going to put my neck out. I'm getting an RSI. Oh, shit. <sighs> things I do for my hobby. I've got things I do for my hobby. Now, <clears throat> it's supposedly 
a Spanish galleon. Very debatable if it's actually a Spanish galleon, okay? But it's a really big ship. Oh, I'm not even really flying. Getting too excited. It's a really big ship and a really big box. And I got this for sort of, well, if you if you try to get hold of the original Ertl box or the Iami kit um, or even the latest Fujimi rebox of the Spanish Galleon in this scale, 1 to 100 scale, okay? And they all look the same. Get, get to that in a sec. Um, you, you're paying, you know, 100, 100 bloody, you know, or 10 shekels, 10, 10 to 12 shekels. Well, this I got for five shekels, okay? So that seemed like a bargain. It seemed to be good. And I checked on scale mates. And there it is in the timeline. Everything's really good. And the one thing, the one tiny piece of information that I failed to look at in my exuberance and excitement is that all the other ones were a Rebox from the original Ertl kit, which is very good. Uh, this one said new tool. Well, maybe I did look at it. Oh, good, I've cleaned it up. And then later on, I'm reading and reading the forums and everything, and some beautiful versions of the Ertl or the Iami kit made up. And um, it comes up really good. You know, it comes up with a spend a bit of little TLC on it and paint it up. It absolutely comes up beautifully. I can't show you the pictures because I'll be copyright from other people. Just take my word from this thing. Turns up as an absolute rip snort. It really comes up well. It's it's very big. Like, it's a big... You're getting, you're getting a lot of value for your money. So it'll be a barrel of laughs to build. Same scale as a bounty, but this thing's about twice as long and twice as high. So I'll be able to get my fat fingers in there and actually actually rig it without bloody giving myself osteoporosis, you know? Uh, so what's the problem? Okay. This brand, Lee, right? I think it's Lee CE or something. Uh, they've only been around since 1999. And... That's not an aeroplane. That's actually one of the Hooney cars. There's a guy in my neighbourhood. He starts up. He's got a um, a Subaru, you know, like a Subaru type thing, you know, four wheel drive turbo sort of, you know, a street racer type thing. And he's put extractors on or something like that. So um, he likes to start it up and he likes to warm it up, you know. So um, the whole house shakes. He's sort of and then and he does that twice a day. And he's got a couple of Hooney mates coming in too. So that that's, that makes it very interesting. Living here in the boot. Yeah, I, I, I divert. Anyhow, um, so Lee here, C.E. Lee, what do they call themselves? Uh, they've been accused, okay, accused, allegedly, allegedly, of copying other people's models, you know, basically stealing, getting the moulds and making absolute blatant copies of them and then spitting it out again. Now, um, since I found this out, I haven't had the heart to actually open the box and have another look. Because when I first looked, it looked really good. It looked identical to the Army kit, and the Ertl kit and the Fujimi kit, identical. So look, this is the kit. This is it. You know, if it walks like a duck and it talks like a duck. Well, it's probably a fucking duck, isn't it? Well, it's not. It's probably, accusedly, more than likely, a cheap copy. A knockoff. Yes. Not real tits at all. They're only plastic. So I don't know. I'll, um... Oh, shit, there's number eight. Ah, oh, stuff it. There you go. So for the length of this video, which has only been going probably about, you know, 16 minutes, we've had eight bloody aeroplanes. Welcome to my life. Welcome to Brisbane. Welcome to the big city. All right, enough of all this. I'll, I'll talk more about Mr. Lee and his Spanish galleon. It's not even really, I mean, it kind of looks like, it's more like an Elizabethan ship, more like a Golden Hind or something. Um, but, but they call it a Spanish galleon. You can paint it up to look like one, you know. It's indicative of the style. And... We'll have a look through this and hopefully my fears are not realised that actually it is quite good and somehow they maybe they've got licence for moulds. <laughs> Modern Chinese company. Yeah, of course they've got licence for moulds. Of course they did. Yeah, Tiger. <laughs> yeah, go and have a look at the Tiger Swim Wagon. Then go and have a look at the um, Tamiya Swim Wagon. And you make your own decision. <laughs> right, okay, enough of that. Before we start an international incident with the Orientals. Probably the first time I've done that. Okay, well, I seem to have pissed off everyone in this video. The Catholics aren't watching. The Orientals aren't watching. I probably upset the Italians because I didn't get the bloody, the, 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 the bloody Mackie things right and God knows what else. You know, the German aeroplanes and, oh, look, everyone's upset with Harry Houdini. I don't give a shit. <laughs> this is my channel and life is just too short to be worried about what other people think. And as you can tell, I don't give a frack. <laughs> and as far as those bloody... Um, rancid transvestite animals go yeah these aren't made for kids these videos mate and if you're targeting kids or shoddy advertising to it well that's your problem okay because i swear and i carry on like a pork chop 
and I'm not going to cop at any fines. <laughs> All right, that's it. I've won enough. There's lots of other things to talk about, and I, I might start a new segment um, next week. Uh, I've got an idea. I've got an idea. Um, for when I'm busy and I don't have time to always give you um, build videos and everything, I'm going to do little little snippets, 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 snippets. Okay. More of that next week. I'll I'll have something out for you to enjoy. All right, that's it. Goodbye from Australia, and it's Hooray from Harry Houdini. <laughs>